preparing. It says it's preparing. This webinar is being live streamed. And then I go here to my page and I just confirm showing my temporary picture. That's not what I want. I want to see my, there we go. Okay, it's there. I can see all the stuff. Uh, guys and girls and non-binary gendered. Oh, I got to mute my own thing. There we go. I really want to take this Zoom watermark off, but this is the cross I must bear. I already uh, poured my tea because I was doing a bit of writing. And so I apologize that I didn't give you the, uh, the part of the show we all love, which is me pouring tea into my cup and then drinking it. Instead, we'll just, we'll just do it like that. It's not quite as hot either, but it is good tea. We got some Pacific Sun. That's vanilla and orange tea, which is as delightful as it sounds. Good morning, Adam French, AKA bro. Oh, I'm a brohemoth. Cool. Isn't it great how many, bonjour, bonjour, Carole. Salut, salut. When I traveled to Quebec when I was younger, and I'm gonna be there in about two weeks, they all said salut. Salut was the greeting and the goodbye. And when, when you would leave, people would be like, okay, salut là, which means I guess it would kind of translate to like, all right, see you then or something along those lines. Yes, David, live coaching. And uh, and then when I speak to my friends in France and I say, salut, they're like, oh, that's so charming and quaint. So little do they know, I don't even know what the hell I'm saying half the time. So the joke's on them. Hello, Celine. Hello, David. Hello, everyone. Uh, this week has been a roller coaster for Bay and I. I'm gonna share a little bit about that. I'm gonna share a distinction that David brought to me. David will talk about what you brought, which was, um, meeting people where they're at. And then we're gonna bring Kayla on. We'll have Kayla talk a bit and then we'll dive in. It's gonna be great. Hey, Heather, H, hello, H. We've got England representing. I think we've got France representing. We've got Spain, rep strong European contingent. We've got Spain representing. The World Cup of leadership is here today. This, um, at the start of this week, we, uh, Bay and I run a retreat. And as part of running that retreat for the forge, we had to make a decision about um, where are we going to stand with regards to vaccination? Are we going to let non-vaccinated people in? Are we going to just say, everyone come, do your best? Are we going to require tests? Are we going to require vaccination? What is right? What is wrong? Blah, 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 blah. And the challenge about this particular decision is that there was no right answer. There's no we can we all feel that we know the right answer, but the truth is there's no there's no objective thing we can really point to that says this is what you should do with an event like this from people around the world of this number, blah, blah, blah. If there was a right answer, it would make our decision so much easier because we wouldn't have to make the choice. The choice is already made for us. Do the right thing, do the right answer. That's the nice thing about laws, I guess. I don't have to think about whether or not I murder someone because I'm mad at them. It's already made for me. Bad example, but stick with me. And so we had to pick what we would call a stand as leaders. We had to choose a place that we put our feet down and said, this is what we're holding. And as we checked in internally, got supported by our coaches, got supported by our coaches again, because this is a challenging decision where we landed was we're going to require vaccination to attend the retreat. And that was challenging for a few reasons. One, because we have some people that don't want that. And uh, two, we have people that are vaccinated, but don't like the sort of mandatory feeling of that. Um, and three, we, um, wh what was the third thing? I can't remember. Oh, I can't remember what the third thing was. I guess it was really just that like, we, again, we don't, there's no rightness to this. And so as you can imagine, anytime you take any kind of stand, and especially one in light of something that's quite emotional for most of us, ourselves included, it caused, oh, that was what the third thing was, that we hadn't announced this at the start of this year's Forge. We hadn't told people that because we didn't know. We were kind of like, hey, how is this going to play out? What can we do? How can we make this work? Is there a way we can do it that makes the best sense for everyone? And eventually we arrived here. And as we shared this, it drove up some reactions and um, had people feel a whole range of emotions. And as leaders, 
The challenge for us is to receive all of that without making anyone wrong for how they feel and to continue to honor our stand. Again, not because it's right, but because that's just where we're standing. That's, that's what is true for us and where we are kind of putting our, our flag in the ground as leaders. So the first half of this week, <laughs> that felt like three weeks of us being with all the energy kicked up, all of our own energy, all of that stuff. And then um, on the heels of that, like a bunch of other crazy stuff has happened. Um, we've had a ton of people wanting to work with us, unrelated, I, am, I assume, energetically, maybe similar. And we've actually had um, our first registrant for next year's Forge, for the Forge 2022. We've only just started. We're only past the first month of this year's Forge, and we already have someone who signed up for the next year. So it's just like, holy mackerel, there's a real roller coaster. And that's the nature of leadership. Um, what we as humans try to do is we try to flatten out that roller coaster because it's easier for us to be with. So we flatten it out by controlling all the variables by like, if I can just make, if I can offload all of my choice making to the rules and what I'm supposed to do and what society tells me to do and all of that, then I don't really have to be with very much. And where we're left is this nice, flat, manageable, consistent, predictable life. What happens next is we get fucking bored of it and we start to create drama and we start to take alcohol or drugs or, or have affairs or stuff to create the excitement that we're actually craving underneath all of that flatness that we've created. So this has been a, a week, I was going to say a month, it feels a bit like a month. This has been a week of really like full experience and expression for Bay and I. And uh, I was driving on Tuesday and I had, I'd, I'd not been physically crying, but you know that feeling when you have and your, your cheeks feel a little bit like dry from the salt and um, your eyes feel a little bit sort of uh, a little bit, what's the word, stingy maybe or tired or whatever. And, and I was just reflecting like, huh, I've not physically been crying, but energetically I have. This has been a lot to be with. And there's been like some emotions that have been driven up for me. And so um, all in all, what I would say has been a cool week. It's been a full week and I'm stoked the weekend is here. And I hope you are too. Let's have a sip of tea to celebrate that. Hell yeah, Friday. Dave says, this is next level. Leaders often turn into bosses without decisions and make themselves right. Yeah, not just leaders, all of us. <laughs> That's the human, um, human condition, I think, is that we, we look to, uh, we get righteous. We dig our heels in and that's totally fine. The trouble with getting righteous is then we can only see our perspective. And then from only being able to see our perspective, we start, we're left with only one option, which is, say yes to the people that agree with us and cut out the people that don't. And that successively makes your world smaller and smaller and smaller and lessens the amount of the world you can impact, which is the opposite of what we're striving for as leaders, which is how can I create more and more of the impact I'm on this planet to create? David, I am wicked jealous that you're playing some Dungeons and Dragons. Are you a DM or do you, are you a character? Are you a PC? I guess I would call it. I'm jealous. I, I want a Dungeons and Dragons group. I really like role-playing games a lot. Um, let's talk about the distinction we've got, and then we'll bring Kayla on. So David, I actually want to bring up, David sent me, by the way, everyone, I love it when you send me stuff and are like, I'd love to hear you talk about this on Friday. That's the best thing in the world. So if you have anything like that, send it to me. David sent me this, and it's a post someone had made. And they say, I am not here to meet my clients where they are. They need to meet me where I am because I am here to lift them up. They get to step up for the sake of their own growth. I'll read it one more time. I'm not here to meet my clients where they are. They need to meet me where I am because I'm here to lift them up. They get to step up for the sake of their own growth. So that statement, um, it's... It's really, uh, it's a common one that I'm really present to in a lot of early coaching, my own included. And the, the energy behind that is like, I'm not lowering what I'm bringing to you. I'm going to stay up here and you got to get up here. That's, that's the gift that I have to bring you. What 
gets missed in that is people's humanity. What gets missed in that is recognizing like it's all fine and good to say to someone like, you got to jump over this, you know, this grant, this canyon, we got to leap across it. That's what's next for you. But saying that to a baby would be cruel. It would be unfair. There's a gradient we work with. I wouldn't expect a baby to start doing calculus. I would first teach a baby what numbers mean. And then I would teach them about this symbol. And then about that weird division symbol that also has five other ways of representing it. And then I would teach them about multiplication. And I would teach them about this and then that and then that. So we have to work with a gradient. And I would assert that what's happening when people say quotes like this, and I would assert this, from the basis of why I would say things like this back in the day and why people that I support in deepening their ability to be masterful as coaches say this sort of thing is because we're not aware of our own gradient. So typically what happens is coaches get into this, people get into the work of coaching and they don't take on their own work because traditionally that's not how the world is set up. The world's set up, you get your education and then you go and you work at your job and you kind of learn on your feet, but you don't have to invest any more. You don't invest any more money. The rest of the learning happens while you're being paid. Coaching's completely the flip of that. Coaching is you pay for training and then you're just getting started. Not only do you have to, hey, Abril, not only do you have to start, like continue getting coached or um, pay for training, you got to invest in a coach over and over and over. And what investing in a coach brings you, or one of the things is it has you take on parts of your life and stumble and then be open and willing to get the support that allows you to not stumble, to move through that difficulty over and over and over again. People saying things like this quote, I'm not here to meet my clients where they are. They need to meet me where I am because I'm lifting them up. They're kind of blind to this gradient. They're under this impression, this illusion, I would say, that people should, should just be able to like get up there. The only reason they're not doing it is because they just are choosing not to, which is a nice idea like, oh, it's just choice, but it's just not really the way things work. The child is not doing calculus from a lack of choosing. The child's doing calculus because they're not yet there on the gradient. And what makes coaching really magnificent is it meets you where you are. These kind of coaches, the kind of leaders and coaches saying stuff like this, um, let me just see if I can get the right words for this. They're playing a game in, of, in their life. So what I mean by that is what they're creating in their life, what they're saying yes to, what they're setting as goals is all entirely inside of what they're already capable of. And consequently, they never really have to fail in the way that would then require the support of a coach to break free of their existing paradigm and range and create what's next and have them discover their own gradient and discover that, wow, just choosing to do it alone is not sufficient. That alone doesn't seem to be getting me there. There's a bunch of stuff you can achieve in your life already that simply by choosing to achieve it, you'll be able to get there. It's only once you start challenging yourself or being challenged to create and lean into goals far beyond what you even know how to create that you're kind of confronted with not always. Sometimes there's a gradient I have to work through. And so these people, because they don't invest in themselves this way, they, they, they continue to operate inside their existing range and the results that are possible within their existing ways of being. They never get confronted by their own gradient. And consequently, they then turn around and that's what they deliver to the people they work with. And what that ends up creating, what the, the upshot of this kind of quote and the, the energy behind it is that someone coming to the world from this place is going to end up supporting clients to create results for which they are already reliable, meaning they don't really need that coach's help and, or having clients come to them to try to achieve something. This person's not really able to support them because they're like, just meet me here. And then the person gets disillusioned and leaves and never comes back to coaching because they're like, it just didn't really work for me. And the tragedy in all of this is that this quote is intended to be empowering. It's intended, I, I trust, its intention is to really like lift people up. And what it actually does is it deepens the gap. It makes people feel like the problem is theirs, that they can't seem to get up here. And so then you end up with coaching that 
actually leaves people feeling more disempowered than when they began. That sucks. And so this, hopefully, what I can convey here is this is why I think it's so important that we as coaches take on our work, meaning invest in our own coaches and lean into our lives this way. I can have a great deal of compassion for people that do things like ask a lot of questions or qualify themselves a lot or, um, or struggle and don't want, like, stop at I don't know. And the reason I can have so much compassion for them is because that's me. <laughs> that I, I've gotten supported so many times through that because that's where I stop too, is not knowing and not wanting to look dumb and choosing goals that are entirely in my wheel wheelhouse. Like, I want to make a 2% raise next year because that way I don't have to fail and no one has to witness me and I don't have to be with the excruciating vulnerability of a coach supporting me in the areas where I look dumb or you know all of that sort of stuff. So David, that's, that's what I would have to say about that quote is it's like a lot of, um, we'll call it like um, well-meaning, but not particularly well-distinguished memes and pop personal development. It, it is ostensibly about empowering people and it actually disempowers them further. That's why a lot of people have um, their hackles up about the coaching profession is because the vast majority of people calling themselves coaches have no coaching under their belt, don't work with their own coach, don't even often have training and then gravitate towards this stuff because it sounds powerful intuitively. It's like, oh, such a powerful stand. But in fact, under the covers, it actually furthers the gap for people. And so of course the public, the vast majority of people are like, ah, I think coaching is kind of bullshit. Given that this is the main, the vast majority of what's being called coaching, they're right. They're not wrong. It is kind of bullshit. Okay. That was a bit of a downer conversation, isn't it? Let me, let me try to take a swing. I'm going to answer your question there, Abel. Here's what I would um, like a more positive way to hold this would be like, um, I'm here to lift my clients up. Actually, the way I would hold this, the way I'd word this is like, I'm here to support my clients stepping up themselves. And in service of that, I'm willing to meet them anywhere they are, because that's where they currently are. That's where we begin the journey together. Not me standing on top of a plateau and saying, climb this cliff. Abril, what do I do on weekends? This weekend, I'm going to... Depending on the weather, I'm, I'm going to go for a bike ride with my dad, and then we'll probably go to a pub and maybe have a beer and some lunch. Uh, the weather's kind of crappy, so I think we'll probably hang out with my mom and my dad, and, and Bay will probably come join us. Um, I'm catching up with a friend, my oldest friend, my best and oldest friend from um, elementary school who lives in a different city. We don't talk that much. He actually was one of my earlier clients. Um, it's not like we had an ongoing friendship. We've kind of been friends and then like a whole bunch of time had passed. And I'm also going to record some podcast episodes because I chose not to do that earlier today. I didn't want to, or uh, earlier yesterday, I was like, ah, I don't want to work today. So now that got moved to Sunday and I'll probably clean the house a little bit and relax. I'm also going to take off this cardigan because it's getting toasty. Okay, let's shift to starting to talk about Kayla before we bring her on. Um, so Kayla knows Bay and I, we know Kayla, I think initially through um, Rich Litvin and his community of which Bay and I used to be quite a part of, not so much anymore. Um, oh, Kevin, I'm gonna come to your question as soon as I finish talking about who Kayla is. Um, so we met her there and she and Bay initially got in a conversation and then she was one of the earliest members of the Forge. I think she was in our second iteration. So we ran it one, or maybe even the first, now that I'm thinking about it. We'll find out. We'll ask her. And then uh, just finished the last year. So she uh, came back and was like, I'm feeling called into this work again. And just graduated uh, four months or so ago. So before I bring Kayla on, let's just finish by talking to what Kevin's written. Um, Kevin says, hi, Adam, would you identify an aspect of coaching with healing? Curious about your thoughts on that. Sorry if this is off topic. Kevin, nothing's off topic. Nothing is off topic here. The less on topic, the better, because I guarantee we can wrap it in. So here's how I would put that. And this is partially informed by a, a great book by Leon Vanderpool called A Shift in Being. 
And what he says, and what I also subscribe to, is that coaching is not geared towards healing. That's not where we're putting our attention. We're not saying, how do I heal this person? We're saying, what do you want to create? How do we support you in moving towards that? And what what transformation is there to happen in order to support you creating that thing that you want to create in your life? And having said that, transformation is inherently healing. What transformation is ultimately about is noticing wh what are the parts of myself that I have suppressed or learned to overexpress in order to get the love, the whatever, the, the et cetera, that I think I need. I'm just going to change my lighting here. we got like hell lighting in the background. Early morning video lighting, please. There we go. And so anytime someone uh, takes on transformation and then creates the capacity to express more of themselves more freely, more fully, that will inherently be a healing process. So deep transformational coaching absolutely causes healing in someone, but it is not where we put our attention. I hope that makes sense. Um, okay, Kayla, I think it's time for you to take your mic off mute and put your camera on and then, then it won't just, yay, now you're here. Hello. <laughs> hello. Hello. How's it going? It's going good. I've been enjoying, uh, sitting here and listening to this conversation so far. What did you hear? Like what showed up for you as I was speaking or talking? Yeah. I mean, well, my brain is focused on the piece that you just talked about, about how really transformation is mm. more of us expressing ourselves in the world. And via that, it can be very healing. Um, I was just thinking about my own clients and how I see them being more fully expressed as who they are and living a life that's in alignment with who they are. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that. Yeah. Yes. And it's very healing. So very cool. It's incredible to witness. I find, you know, like when the small things too, like it's easy. It's important to have tangible results. I hold, cause that's the mark. That's the measure, right? Like that pulls us towards something, but then it, once we have that, it's easy to get fixated on those. And it's often those come kind of, we have to sit, state those first, but then they come secondarily to the transformation where someone's mm -hmm. like suddenly able to be fully expressed as their bigness. And then that's when people start to take notice and come see them and What's, what's something you've noticed in your clients just recently? Like what's a, a shift or a transformation that you've been present to? Yeah, I was just thinking of two of them in particular, and I am just so in awe of them. Like what they originally came to me for, again, was those very tangible, specific results. But like you were saying earlier, they were kind of within the typical, like the paradigm that they're in now, like they were predictable right. for that paradigm. And I've watched them over the past six months, just kind of we're in it for a year together, just open up to what they actually want, like what they wanted mm -hmm. before wasn't what they wanted. It was based on their survival mechanism, based on, on a past version of them that, you know, they grew into because of their family, society, et cetera. And now right. they're just really owning their desires, what they really want. And funny enough, it's, it's not actually those tangible outcomes like money or success or fame. Like it's, it's not that it's just space in their days, the ability to choose huh. what they want to do every moment, um, the ability to create and express themselves fully. So yeah, it's really beautiful. I love it. Ah, that's cool. Mm. Um, you were, were you in our, I think you were in our very first forge, right? Like Sheila, Shelly, we don't have yes. to go into the names, but they were part of it too, right? But I think that was the second. I'm pretty sure that there was one that you guys did before because someone had mentioned it to me who had done it before. And that's why I was like, Ooh, that sounds interesting to me. Ah, interesting. Wow. Mm. And back then it was called forging the steel, right? Yes. Huh. Yes. So what was going on? We won't spend too much time here, but like what led you back? Cause you've just finished another year with us. So what like brought you back in? What had you come back? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I just love you and Bay. and I'm always of course. like, you're both my people. So um, yeah, there was that of course. And then I think on a more practical level, I wanted a container um, mm. to continue just doing my work. And I wanted to deepen into my coaching skills. And I know too, that being in a container kind of keeps me on track with things. And so, yeah, I just, it was just an pure intuition, pure feeling like this is, 
this is the time to do this again. Um, nice. And of course it was, it was, it was the right choice to make the right decision to make. So I'm very oh, happy with cool. where I am now. So <laughs> sweet. Um, well, shall we dive in? Shall we dive into some coaching? Yeah, I would love that. Cool. Okay. Well, what, let me get a book here just so I've got something to write in just in case you say awesome stuff. What, um, what should we look at? What do you want to work on? Yeah. So I want to give like a couple of sentences of just context and then dive into what it is that I want. Awesome. Um, yeah, I've actually been struggling to figure out what I want support with in my life. And I think we touched on this in the forge where there's a, a part of me, I am vulnerable until I'm not. And so mm. I think I've found myself in that place of, Ooh, okay. I am only vulnerable until I'm not. So I can't see what I need support with. And it's really frustrating and annoying <laughs> because, um, I know that that's not true. I know that there are areas for me to get support, but where I have been getting support up in my coaching journey until mm, I'd say like the last year is with my business. It's been, right. how do I create more clients? Like, how do I create more income? Uh, how can I be the best coach I can be? So it's been very focused on business, on money, on success, on those tangible results per se. Um, and now that I've, I have that, like I'm, I'm here, I'm arrived, I've, I've gotten there. It's like, what next? Like, <laughs> and I've been struggling to answer that question. It's like, I've created almost everything that I saw for myself as impossible almost five, six years ago when I first started this journey. I'm living in a small beach town in Mexico with my part, my person, the love of my life, with a full practice, with a waiting list. Like I've hit all of these things. And so now I'm questioning, like, you know, I'm, I'm like, what, what's next? And I'm hitting that. I'm hitting that place where I'm only vulnerable until I'm not. It's like, I kind of have this feeling like I've got it all figured out. And so, you know, preparing for this call, I was like, what am I going to ask for support with? And then as I was talking it out with my partner, Ryan, it, it came to me, like, I feel connected to my life. I feel really excited for what's going on, yeah. but there's a level of intimacy that's missing and that I'm craving and that I really want. And to give you a couple of examples of what that looks like tangibly, please. Um, I noticed that like I have, you know, four like really great girlfriends, but those relationships, they don't, they're not like fulfilling me. Like they don't feel deep. They don't feel like the kind of um, intimate connection that I want to have with friends. Like we don't really talk that much. Uh, you know, they've kind of faded and I'll always love them. They're my best, best friends, but I want more. Like I want something deeper. I want to feel more connected. And does it necessarily need to be with them? I don't know, but I would love to have those deep friendships where I can just call someone and be like, hey, let's hang out or, hey, I need help with this or whatever. Um, I don't have that. So I have lots of friends, but I don't have that deeper level. Um, same thing with Ryan. I mean, I have this amazing partner and we, we have such good community. Very photogenic. <laughs> Thanks. You guys are very attractive couple in your photos. Yeah. Anyhow, oh, not your thank point. <laughs> you. Yeah. And like, I love him so much. And I've noticed that like my desire to be intimate has definitely uh, kind of dropped off. And so it's mm. like, again, I feel connected. I feel more connected to this man than I ever have in my life. Yet there's that deeper level of fire that I'm craving. Um, and then the last piece is really kind of around me. Uh, I... I love being creative and I want to write and I am a writer and Ryan and I are actually co-creating a book together, which is really beautiful. Um, but like, I want to be writing my own stuff more and I want to be expressing it out in the world. And I, and I do that now, but I want more. <laughs> and mm. so it's kind of like, where's the disconnect? Like, yes, I feel connected to what I'm sharing and posting, but I want more. Uh, it only comes like trickles in sometimes. So those are kind of three examples. So yeah, I just want to talk about today, like how can I create that deeper level of intimacy with my life? Like not just feel connected to it, but feel really intimate with it uh, and feel like 100% fulfilled. Mm. So, okay. So they're like, just to reflect back some of the stuff I heard, like this notion of like, you're vulnerable until you're not, that's 
not necessarily exactly what you were talking about, but kind of a, a theme you've noticed, you've distinguished that. Mm. And then um, the big one is sort of intimacy that you're talking about. And then um, the three areas you're present to where that's kind of showing up for you are friendships, your romantic relationship and writing content yeah, creation is that right I would say like relationship with self because my writing is mm. such an extension of that relationship with self got it so, yeah okay and okay so let me make a note of that um so how do you how do you gauge like that it is intimacy. Like, I, I'm not saying it's not. I'm just curious how you arrived. Like, oh, the thing is intimacy. Mm, yeah. Um, I guess for me, it's kind of like playing on that other side of where I stop, right? It's like, ooh, there's like a, a lagoon there and it's <laughs> glowing emerald and there's like all these, you know, um, jungle trees around and it feels like this, deeply connected, deeply like um, magical, exciting kind of place. And like, I don't have access to it. Like, how do I, mm. how do I get access to it? Um, so it sounds like you have this kind of experience of there being something missing. Yeah. Like, and, I, and it's within me, it's me, it's not them. It's, it's how I'm showing up. Um, I'm very clear on that too. Okay. So, so what, like, so we've got three places, friendships, romantic relationships, relationship with self as expressed mm -hmm. through your writing and so on. Where should we, if we were to use those three as like a place to kind of start to dive in and look more deeply at this, which of those three should we start down? Good question. Um, I'm not going to lie. Like I would love to go down the partnership route, but that feels a little too tender and vulnerable to maybe talk about over sure. live. Yeah. Uh, so um Let's go with the friendship route because I feel like those two probably have some overlap anyways. Got it. Um, so okay. Yeah, let's do that. So, okay. And so what is your, I, I kind of got it like maybe ephemerally what's missing, but maybe you can just describe it again for me. So I'm really clear on it. What do you feel is missing in that area of your life? Yeah. So What's missing is just, I feel connected to the friends that I have. Like I love them, yeah. but we don't really talk ever. Like it might be, we talk like once a month or once, not even, I would say <laughs> it's just, and for me, when a friendship feels really fulfilling, it's, it's similar to a romantic partner. Like, and I don't need a lot of friends like this, but to have one or two really good girlfriends that, Hey, I can pick up the phone and call them anytime. And mm. like, I want a reciprocal relationship where they can pick up the phone and call me anytime. Um, I, I want relationships where, uh, there's shared interests. Like I would love to have these deep relationships with women who are also coaches uh, so uh -huh. we can talk about this work and and we can uh, look to each other for support um, and then I would love more more on the shared interest people who travel who really get this kind of lifestyle that I'm living this nomadic lifestyle and I would just love the ability to pick up the phone call them like let's go for a walk on the beach let's go for a co-working mm -hmm. date like some you know, you see in movies, like friends who, uh, they're just really close. Like they, they just have this ease about them, this, um, this connectedness about them. Um, like, man, I'm, I'm just sitting there all the time. Like, is this really real? Like, do people really have friendships like this? Uh, and yeah. I want that. I want that. Got it. Okay. So there's a real, like, um, even though you have friendships that you cherish, you value, yeah. not your words, mine, they're not the sort of friendships where you would just pick up the phone at any point in time and talk to them or like regularly do that or anything along those lines. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's like a regular, regular connection. And that's kind of what I'm describing as intimacy, I guess, is more regularly connected. Um, yeah. Right. It's not like just calling to be like, Hey, what's been going on in your life since we last talked? Okay. Bye. You know? <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. Although there may More be some calls moment. like that. I imagine. Yeah. 
It's yeah. not that that can't happen, just that that's not only what happens. Is that right? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So pretty clear. What would you want to leave today by if we have like, say 40 or so minutes, what would you want to get in this conversation? Yeah. I'd love to kind of look at who do I need to be or how do I need to show up as in order to kind of create like be able to open the door to that lagoon mm. <laughs> and be able to be like swimming in there. And, and, um, cause I know it's something within me and you and Bay had given me the reflection in the forge that I can kind of come off as like the queen who shuts her castle door. Right. Um, and I have a feeling that that's sim like similar, that there's something here. It's that queen that shuts the door. And I'd love to kind of look at a different way to be other than the queen who shuts the door. So as to create this, yes. what you're wanting in friendship. Okay, got it. Let me talk to everyone else just for a moment. So what, what we've done at this point, Kayla and I, is we've explored like the context, what's going on, and then started to get clear on what she really wants. Kayla started clear on, I would say, like kind of the thing that might be in the way, but not, we, I at least wasn't super clear on so as to get to where. And so now we're pretty clear on that. She wants like friendships that allow for these kind of things. And um, what she wants to get by the end of this conversation is what do we need to do or be or create? What does she need to do or be or create in order to make that happen? So that's where now we actually have some kind of scaffolding and we can start to dive in. Until we have that, we can't really do anything because it's like, let's solve this problem. What for? I don't know, but let's solve a problem. So we'll just end up running around in circles. Okay, so, well, let's start here. Have you tried to create friendships and relationships like that? Yeah, so I actually, I just met a lovely, uh, a lovely woman this week here. And um, so far it's going good. It's like, it's very fulfilling. I, I love talking to her. She's also a coach. Um, we've spent like, I think three times this week hanging out and it's been so beautiful uh but i'm also present too she's a fellow traveler and she is she may or may not be staying in sayulita so um yeah I, I definitely am feeling more called to create this kind of friendship in person uh like where i am planted as opposed to more friendships that are not in the same area as me um, mm. How does that help me understand that? Because initially I heard you say you really wanted to be able to pick up the phone and call people yeah. at any point or have them call you. And then now I'm hearing you want it to be in person. So how do those two interact? Kind of like pick up the phone, call them be like, hey, what are you doing? Oh, do you want to hang out? And then like meet up. I'm just, I'm a more of a phone person than a text person. And I find that a lot of people are more text people than phone people. So that's what that means for me. Well, if people were not, any particular way, would you, like, I kind of heard you say, well, I'm more this way, but other people are more that way. If mm -hmm. that wasn't an issue, would you still want to create this in person or would you like, uh, or would you still be like, oh, phone is great. I want to be more on the phone. Honestly, like, I, I think it could be either or, but okay. right now, like where I'm being pulled towards is creating a community in person. Um, because I am going to be here where I am for a solid chunk of time. And I would love to create that in-person community. Got it. So what seems to get in the way of doing that? Mm. <laughs> I, I definitely can get in my own way because I like to do certain things and I have a certain routine. And when people don't like fit into that routine, <laughs> I just, I don't really feel drawn to continue mm. to try and create a relationship. Um, okay. So yeah, it's almost like I'm looking for someone who's similar to me. So I think um, allowing for, if they're very different than I am, in terms of how we like to spend our time, our energy level, then I tend not to continue to try and create the relationship. Hmm. Well, that sounds quite challenging. 
So you want someone like you who <laughs> wants to do her own thing and won't just fit into whatever the routine is, but then at the same time, that occurs to me like they're probably not going to just fit into your routine then. Yeah. Is that accurate? Yeah. Like, well, like I, I like to do certain things. Like I like to go to coffee shops and work and I like to go for beach walks and I'm not a partier. I don't want to go out and drink alcohol and be out until God knows when. Um, so it's right. kind of like, I want someone who will fit into that as well. Like fit into this. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what I'm noticing is like our definition of what you want seems to be getting narrower and narrower. <laughs> is that how it feels for you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, well, what are you getting from this conversation so far? What are you seeing? Yeah. I mean, I definitely am just, um, like, I like things the way I like them. And this is true everywhere in my life. It's not true, you know, just here. Uh, and I think that can kind of get in my way a lot of times is when the person doesn't necessarily um, meet how I want them to be or how I feel comfortable or how I want a friendship or any kind of relationship to be, then it can really create a wedge and create less connection. Mm, what happens when you're kind of, so it sounds like there's sort of my way and then there's the ideal of the friendship. And then at some point they come into clashing with each other. What happens then? Mm either someone kind of gets closer to me because it works or it falls away. Like I'll stop putting an effort. They stop putting an effort. Mm. Okay. So what, what do you, like, if we could create the ideal thing for you, can you just like, what, what is it that you would create? Yeah. So I would create, I would love to have like one to two really close girlfriends. Um, okay. I would love for them to be coaches or like in a service online service provider kind of role. Um, okay. I would love for them to, uh, they don't have to be introverted, but they have to understand that I'm introverted and that I, I need a certain level of like energy recalibration. So I can't, I'm not going to be someone who's going to be going out at all hours, et cetera, et cetera. So like our energy levels kind of match. Why do they need um, to understand that? Um, because then it takes less pressure off of me. I feel like I don't have to, I don't have to like bend over backwards to keep the relationship going. I don't have to compromise like my, my boundaries and what I need in order to keep the relationship sustained. Interesting. Let me just make sure I heard that. So you want them to understand you're an introvert because then you don't have to bend over backwards to keep the relationship going. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. And, and what is, what would bending over backwards to keep the relationship? Like what, help me understand what that would look like. Yeah. It would be like someone who like their idea of spending time together is like going out to the bar and meeting up with a whole bunch of people and like staying out till you know, crazy hours in the morning. Um, so what, what would you want to do with them? I love one-on-one. -on -one. Like I am okay. a one-on-one -on -one kind of person and I love spending like an hour and a half together at a time, <laughs> like, you know, either going to a coffee shop, co-working, going for a beach walk, going to the beach, uh, maybe going shopping, um, going to a um, event together like a sound healing or meditation uh, or something kind of cool like a, a moon event um, okay. yeah I would go to the gym I would work out with them um, yeah. okay yeah anything else that you would that would be important in this ideal friendship you're creating I definitely want our communication to mirror that of Ryan's and I, I and mean, Ryan and I have put a lot of effort into being 
trying to use conscious relating principles in our communication. And I've noticed that it's just really made our relationship much better. Um, and so I would love someone who would be open to that, uh, who would be open to having conversations that are conscious, that are um, transparent, that are like, I don't want a friendship where I feel like I have to walk on eggshells or I can't be who I am. And if there is like a problem coming up or something that's getting in the way, I would love to be able to openly talk about that. And um, I've noticed in my life, I've related to friendships very differently than I've related to romantic partnerships. Like romantic partnerships, you're allowed to have all that stuff come up, like all uh -huh. like the tension, but in friendships, like, no, no, no. Like friendships are meant to be the places where, you know, they're like heaven on earth. Like they're never supposed to have any conflict and that's not realistic. That's not how it goes. Um, right. But I think that belief that I hold has created the relationship to be that way where like no conflict can happen, no wrong can happen. And then when it does, it's like, neither one of us wants to bring it up. And then it usually ends up in like, it all comes out eventually and it, and it's not fun. So. Got it. Okay. So you want one or two really close girlfriends that are coaches or some kind of service. They're in some kind of business like that. They're one-on-one -on -one that you hang out with them one and a half hours at a time or whatever. You go to events together, you do that sort of stuff and you like talk about what's showing up in the moment. Mm. And anything else? Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think I could get a little more into like the emotional side of things, like the connection side of things in terms of like what kind of conversations I'm looking for. But I think for the purpose of today, that that is good. Um, that is Got good. It. Yeah. Okay. So what like... So now we're a little more clear on what you're trying to create. Mm -hmm. How does it go when you try to create this? Or is this the first time you've ever tried to create it? So no, I've, I've tried a couple times in the past year. Um, I connected really well with one girl and then like her boundaries were just so strict that I just, it wasn't what I was looking for. Like it was just so, it was like in order to talk to her, I had to, set aside a time to call her and like that just I don't know it got it got really annoying after a while like it wasn't what I wanted um and so yeah we just kind of dropped off and and didn't really continue um okay yeah so, so did you tell that to her did you share that with her nope no I did not okay. interesting <laughs> no I did not what do you make of that it, it just it goes back to like I like do no conflict have no conflict do no harm in a friendship mm. so it's like I want this but I, it's like this belief that I have is is kind of keeping me from showing up in that way um interesting yeah I mean just over here noticing it it like it occurs have you ever um had friends who they're like I really want to date someone but they have to and then they're like he has to be this way and that way and that way and I'm not changing myself and and it's like the only man you're going to get is one who's willing to sacrifice all of who he is to meet that do you know what I have you ever had friends or noticed people and they're like there's no good men out there there can't be <laughs> The man yeah. you are creating is just you and he's like a flimsy replica. So I mm -hmm. noticed there's that same kind of like, it occurs very kind of, Rigid. yeah, there doesn't seem to be a lot of like uh, fluidity available mm -hmm. in this for either you or them. Yeah. Is that what your experience of trying to create friendship feels like, or does it feel like something different? Like, how does it occur for you as you, as you take this on in your life? Yeah, no, it definitely does have that kind of rigid quality. And then, like I said, if it doesn't, if it's not lining up to that, then it just drops away. Like it just, it right. just folds. Um, Got it. Yeah. How long does it usually take before you hit that? Mm, I mean, with this particular example that I'm thinking about, it was like a few months, maybe like four months. Okay. And what about if we look at other examples, like what tends to be the trend? Mm. What tends to be the trend is that like, I will become really close with someone for a while and then 
and then something happens usually on their end, not on mine, um, yeah. that, and then they kind of pull away. And so, and yeah, I have this fear that like, I'm, I'm too needy. <laughs> and so I have a feeling that maybe it's, it's that, um, mm. that I get too needy. Do they tell you that's what's happening? No. Okay. I'm not, not saying those, that's not, not what, in those words, on, just not in those yeah. words. Yeah. Not sure. Maybe words. from their actions or whatever, but it's not uh, like, I keep going back to this. We talk about what's showing up. And I'm curious if in these relationships, they're saying like, hey, Kayla, I need a bit of space or whatever. It sounds kind of like you show up however you show up. And that's when they start to move away. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, if they told me that, I, I would, of course, give them the space. So if there was, again, if there was communication about it, like I would be more than happy to respect it. But I think I'm creating relationships that are a reflection of this, like do no harm, do no, con like have no conflict in friendships. Um, right. And so it doesn't really leave a lot of space for either of us to show up in, in really conscious communication. Hmm. Yeah. What do you see? Like, cause you mentioned, and actually first, let me just speak to the audience briefly. So for everyone watching or listening, we've kind of like started to, the things I'm noticing are like the uh, narrowness, like how small the space is for either Kayla or the other person, or really both of them. The relationship is very tight. And I'm also noticing that the stuff Kayla wants is also the stuff she's not creating herself. That's not a criticism. That's what we're all doing. It's just like, oh, there's a point where something happens and then one of the two people pull away. Hmm. So you mentioned intimacy earlier, and now we're talking about conflict. What is your story or belief about how those two things exist with one another yeah um so i believe that conflict to be able to experience a conflict with someone um is it that i think for me conflict kind of creates intimacy. I don't necessarily think you need to be intimate before conflict happens. I think conflict can happen. And then how you navigate it together has the potential to really create intimacy. Mm, I see. Yeah. So the thing you're avoiding <laughs> is also the thing you want to some extent based on what you just shared. Is that right? Yeah, totally. Got it. Okay, well, where should we go from there? Yeah, it's just almost like, and it's like hard in my brain because it's like with Ryan and I, we've been able to really create some magic when conflict happens. Like, why can't I do that with my friends too? Like, why can't I? Why can't I do that everywhere, even with mm. like my family, you know, <laughs> that's another place right. where, again, if conflict occurs, it just kind of gets dropped and no one talks about it. It's just, you move on eventually. Right. Um, or we've gotten to a place where like the conflict never really comes up anymore. Like it's like, we've avoided it. So right. pave over it. Yeah. Put a bunch of rugs on top. You won't notice. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think. Yeah, like how do I be more brave with conflict? Um, What's different with your relationship with Ryan, either about how you show up or just the relationship itself from the friends? I think what's different with Ryan is that we've been really intentional with our container. Um, we, you know, in the beginning of our relationship, well, from the very moment we met, we've had this agreement between each other that we were going to be very hyper transparent and that we we're going to have all those hard conversations like right up front. Um, and then when we did move deeper into relationship, becoming boyfriend and girlfriend, we sat down and created agreements for our relationship. And so I think having those agreements really allowed me to show up as me. Um, so if conflict did arise, we had already agreed to how we were going to handle it. So mm. there was like permission there. It was like, it wasn't right. like a new thing. It wasn't, it was both, it was talked about ahead of time. Right. Um, it's kind of like yeah. how as a coach, we set up a really clear container with our clients 
which in some ways makes it easier because we've already kind of laid that out. Whereas with, I don't do that with my friends because it'd be kind of fucking weird, right? If I was like, hey, <laughs> yes. Gavin, sit down, <laughs> let's make an agreement. We could do it. It was just yeah. a little, especially for a new friendship, it's a bit heavy. It's yes. The default. Mm-hmm. Got it. So what do you see there is to like, what do you think is kind of, as we talk about this, what would you say is the thing that's kind of holding this at bay or blocking you here? Yeah. I mean, Adam, just what we talked about a moment ago, like, yes, the container and setting those agreements said it being intentional with the container helped me. And I think at one point that was an edge for me. And I think it can't just become a thing that I do (laughs) everywhere because like you said, it's awkward and weird. So I think what's really missing is just me being brave and really being fully expressed in my Mm -hmm. friendships. Maybe we don't need to set the container or be intentional with it or set agreements, but when something happens, I just need to be really honest. And maybe I really need to be honest about what I'm looking for in a friendship too. Mm. Maybe that would be actually, see, that's a conversation I would love to have with someone. Like, what are you looking for in a friend? Um, Yeah. So maybe just doing it and being a little more bold and brave. What's the, like, I'm curious what the payoff is. So I'm clear on like the cost. Mm -hmm. And I think you are too, of this dynamic, which is kind of conflict doesn't ever arise. You guys just sort of, it's like you peter out. sounds like all the friendships just peter out. They start out cool. And then like, oh, not them. They're not the one either. They're not the one either. (laughs) What's the payoff of that? Which I was doing with men, by the way, too. Uh, So congrats on shifting it there. Yeah, Yeah. I shifted it there. No surprise. the payoff so we're talking about kind of like the benefit yeah i think the the benefit is that um i can kind of like avoid any kind of conflict like that's the payoff Mm. for me like i don't actually have to get into the conflict i don't have to um do something different i don't have to deal with the feelings of conflict, because again, in my mind, con- like friendships, there's no place for conflict. And so to get into a conflict with a friend, if, if it just peters out before then, if I just don't say anything or they don't say anything to me and we go our separate ways, we don't have to have that conversation. We don't have to get uncomfortable. Uh, got it. Okay. Let's speak to these people again. Hey, Andrea, Andrea's saying hi, and she misses us both. We hi, miss you too, Andrea. Um, so for everyone with us, it sounds like the story Kayla's got around conflict and relationships is the thing kind of at the heart of this. And so my instinct, which I'm going to check out with Kayla, is to explore what that's about. Uh, she's clear on the story, at least at the surface level, which is just don't have conflict. I want to know what for, why, what, how does that go, all of that sort of stuff. Does that sound like the place for us to go, Kayla? Yeah, that would be interesting because I keep saying this thing. So it's like, what, where did that come from? Yeah, it's it about? clearly there. Like, yeah. yeah. So what, um, tell me about that. Like there's no place for conflict in friendships. Is that the way you worded it? Yeah. So yeah. what, what does conflict and, and like, what does it mean when conflict is present in your world? Not in like the nice, you know, leadership book you read or whatever, not that stuff, the real stuff. Yeah. What is conflict? It means that I am not good. It means that I did something wrong. It Mm. means that, um, yeah, it means that, um, yeah, I, I, I messed up. Mm. Um, Always you? No, no. It means that they've done something wrong, that they've hurt me. Um, so someone did something wrong. Someone did something wrong. Got it. It might be someone, you sometimes, other times it's them, but someone has made a mistake of some sort. Someone did something bad. Yeah. Got it. Okay. And it's either me or them, or maybe right. both. Right. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, what else? Um, Well, I think at this point, conflict means that the relationship is about to shift in a way that maybe I don't want it to. Mm, like, it's, what it's way about, is that? 
it's about to shift. It's about to um, change. There's about to be a different way from when it has been happening. Yeah. And yeah. And yeah. I imagine there's a little more to that than just the way you said it, because if it was like, things are going to shift to awesome, you'd be like, hell yeah, bring on the conflict, but that's not how it currently occurs for you. Is that right? Exactly. Great. So yeah. how is and, it going to shift? If and not towards it, awesome? it goes both ways. Cause there has been a friend that like the conflict happened and the relationship shifted and she was disappointed about the way that it was shifting, but I needed it to shift because I could not, it was not sustainable. Um, uh, so yeah, usually it looks like the closeness that we have, or maybe like the right, like the regular contact that we have, it's decrease. It's going to decrease big time. Got it. So you'll become further separate. Like it, the relationship's going to drift apart is what, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Or maybe, yeah. And not, maybe not necessarily like end, but like definitely there's a drifting. There's a drifting. Right. Well, that makes sense. And I also heard, so drifting or the relationship might end, like your friend became disappointed, whatever. Yeah. I mean, that's very possible. I mean, one time it resulted in a year long, not talking to one of my friends. Uh, we, we broke up for a year and then randomly ran into each other at Starbucks in a town uh, where neither of us were from. So we were meant to come back together, but uh -huh. uh, you know, yeah. So we might break up when there's conflict. Yes. Yeah. I see. What was the nature of that breakup? Like, so there was some conflict and then did you guys get in a fight or how did that all play out? Yeah, there was conflict. It all happened over text messaging. Um, there was misunderstanding on both sides. And then she was just like, I need a break. Like I need to, I needed to put some space between us. And so she told me she wasn't going to talk to me. And then I, she did, I think, reach out like a couple months later and I was not ready at that point. I had moved away from her. Mm, got it. Yeah. So, so yeah. it sounds like conflict is really like a, I'm not hearing in this a lot of positive ways that conflict goes. It's kind of like a harbinger, har harbinger for things ending one way or the other, yeah. either you drift away from each other or it's just like the schism happens and that's that. Yeah. And what's up with that? Because I feel like when Ryan and I get in conflict and we move through it, it brings us closer. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, it sounds like this context doesn't necessarily exist in your relationship with Ryan, but it does exist in friendships and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so someone did something wrong. Someone's messed up. Someone's made a mistake. That's the first thing we know. And I would imagine if that's the nature of conflict, one of us fucked up, who's the fuck up, then that's hard to be in relationship with someone when it's either like, I'm, you know, it's if, if every time I show up in relationship with someone, it's like, well, I, I'm a fuck up. Even if they forgive me for being a fuck up, I'm still a fuck up. That's hard to be with. And likewise, it'd be hard to be on the other side of that. And so I could imagine, you know, over time that just becomes less desirable to be around. Okay. Well, this is making sense. It makes sense you'd avoid this. Yeah. 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 So for everyone that's listening, notice how much sense it makes. What most people will try to do is talk Kayla out of this or like, so just don't have conflict or it's just a story, but it's none of that. And just trying to talk her out of it is going to miss the gold that's here. There's a rich reason that Kayla's avoiding conflict. Who would want to enter and stay in a relationship where you or the other person is fucked up? You can bury that down as far as you want, but there's still gonna be that seed of someone's a fuck up and it's just gonna sit there and fester. Is that the experience? Like, I'm curious if you've had experiences where you've kind of, you and someone else have managed to like get the conflict down, but it's still there. Does that exist in your family? You said there, you guys kind of bury it a fair bit. Yeah, yeah, I think that, yeah, um, it just doesn't get talked about. It doesn't uh -huh. ever get, it, it does. We don't get complete on it. Right. Adam, to, to, to our bringing back some of the coaching language, but yes, we don't get complete. There's still, um, there's still some, 
energy festering. And even if we've moved on from it, even if there's that like lack of completeness, I think it does carry a residue over time. Um, Uh, Yeah. yeah. Got it. Okay. So what we've got like maybe 10 more minutes, we won't be able to completely resolve this, but the thing I'm curious about is what do you do then as a result when you sense or feel conflict? What are the actions you take as a result of these beliefs? Mm. Sense or feel conflict. Um, well, I think sometimes I, well, I'll just use the example. So with the girl last year, I just completely avoided it. It was just like, I'm going to, she, I don't want to have this conversation about like how strict her boundaries are and how it's not working with me. So I'm just going to, I just like, let it fade. Um, so the relationship that. itself the relationship itself. So there's one, like if I'm not too deep in it with someone, then just avoid conflict completely. Just like stop being friends, just let it fade. Uh, I think with some of my other friends though, who I've been like, maybe we've been really close for a while and I'm sensing conflict. Like I either just kind of still operate on top of uh, the, the, maybe I'm getting an intuition, like, Hmm, things are kind of, different um yep. but rather than talk about it i just kind of operate on top of it as if like we don't bring there's like an elephant in the room right like yeah. i don't pretend bring it's not it. there pretend it's not there um yeah. so there's that um, so when one you let the relationship just go away or you pull away and another one you stay but it's sort of like now we're both dancing around something yep okay yeah and then when the conflict kind of comes to a head i would say like with my other friend a few years ago there gets to be a point. Oh, well, and that's the other thing. Yeah. I just operate. There's an elephant in the room, but then when it gets to a point that like, it's just too much, like, I guess I, I would lash out. Like Mm -hmm. I would, maybe not that's a strong word lash out, but I would finally like bring it up, but maybe not in the best of ways because it was really, yeah, I, I was sitting with the feelings and they were really like, I was getting really just angry and fed up and frustrated. And it kind of came out as opposed to, Hey, like I could sit down with you and really have a loving conversation and bring this to your attention. Yeah, no, that doesn't happen. It's like a lash out. Got it. And when you lash out, is it like, Hey, there's something showing up between the two of us, or is it more like, it sounds kind of like it's more pointed at them. Yes. That's when it's, they're doing the wrong thing. Okay. Got it. But when I'm doing the wrong thing, yeah. Like I might just operate over top of it and just pretend it's not there because <laughs> I don't, I don't want to, um, I don't want to find out the truth if my intuition is, is right. Uh, and how long does that go for? Like, what's the sort of Usually end game in, for that? It could be until they uh, say something. And how does that go when they say something? Like you describe, yeah, go ahead. Make myself horribly wrong and I feel shitty and I feel horrible and I don't know what to do with myself. Got it. And it can sometimes be a little bit of like, well, they're doing something wrong too. (laughs) So it's like kind of like I'm doing something wrong and they're also doing something wrong. Like, yeah. So I think there can be an opportunity for both in that situation so point back over there if if i'm to blame well so are you yeah yeah got it okay but this is all in this is all internal i'm not going and telling them any of this it's just yeah it's just sitting in me and if they came at you and were like kayla it's time i gotta tell you this thing you said you make yourself horribly wrong so there's like sort of a throwing yourself on your sword to it would that be an accurate way to portray it is that all you do or do you also sometimes point back like, does it become external at that point or does it stay internal? I think it would stay internal until like that conversation ended. And maybe after the conversation I had ended, it would be like a secret, like, well, they did this wrong too. <laughs> it's uh, not all me. It. So I would right. never bring it to them, but I would be thinking it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Well, this makes sense. This, <laughs> like, I can totally, you know, I'm not being facetious about that. Like, if this is the way conflict 
occurs and then the actions you take, of course you would avoid conflict because it's not going to end in any positive way when it does get brought forward. What, what are you taking from the conversation? We're just starting to wind down here, getting to the end of our time. So what are you taking from all this? Yeah, I'm taking a combo. Well, when we were talking, I remembered that I am my breakthrough that I'm working on that I'm sitting with is Ariel. And the whole point behind Ariel is that, you know, she loses her voice. She trades her voice so that she can go up on, on land. And um, she really can't create the life that she wants until she gets that voice back. And so I think I'm being brought back to Ariel that this is really just about self-expression being fully expressed. Um, I love what you brought in around, or maybe I brought it in, I don't remember, but something you said made it a clear question, like maybe not setting clear containers with new friends, but asking them, hey, like what, what are you looking for in a friendship? Um, what kind of friendships are you looking for in this part of your life? I think that's a really beautiful question to ask someone without being, without having it be so like, you know, let's sit down and form friendship agreements. <laughs> right. Uh, so I like that. I think that's a way for me to be more expressed from the beginning. And then I think when I notice something happening that, um, that I'm not happy with or when an intuition is coming up that maybe they're not happy with me, actually just addressing it, like sitting down and, and bringing that elephant to the table and talking about it, mm. um, being expressed and not just kind of sitting on it. And cool. Yeah. So real practice and sharing what's showing up for you. Yes. Practice and showing what's showing up in the moment, every moment. I mean, uh -huh. gosh, that could even, that could even just be like, Hey, I, I just want to say, I've really been enjoying spending some time with you and getting to know you. It could even be that, um, I don't do that. You know, do I ever comment mm -hmm. on the dynamic? No, but like, would I do that with Ryan? Yes. So like, why can't I bring that here as well? Mm -hmm. I'm curious. You didn't mention completion at all, but you did talk about it in our call which maybe a better word, like a less jargony word might just be forgiveness. Mm. So I notice, I know, here's what I notice about your dynamic is like conflict means someone fucked up. And so the best, what's the best it ever gets inside conflict, meaning someone fucked up? Um. <laughs> best it ever gets the best it ever gets is that the conflict will go away but there'll be a sense of distance there won't the close like that closeness disappears there's no real opportunity for it to come back in the way that it was before right i mean some of the other things i was thinking is like never have any conflict so that would be all ideal because then no one ever fucked up in a relationship the other one I could imagine is like the best it gets is that it, like you said, right? Someone conflict of some sort might even be a disagreement of opinion. And then it kind of goes away or maybe the best it gets is like, we share our truth with someone and then they admit that they're wrong. And it's like, Oh, great. We can get past this now. Cause you've admitted you're wrong. Are you still there? You're very stoic. Oh, we've lost Kayla. I'll just wait for her to come back. I'll have a sip of tea. And I'll talk to people while we're waiting for Kayla to come back. So Kayla's got a relationship to what conflict means in, in a relationship. And we could put all of these things. We could be like, when conflict shows up, just do the bold thing and share what's there. But if Kayla is sharing what's there from the lens of you fucked up or I fucked up, then there's a limitation to that game. And so it almost doesn't, she's just on her way back. It almost doesn't matter what Kayla says or whether she does or doesn't share it. Telling someone you fucked up sucks. That's not going to feel good. And the best it gets is that someone does a mea culpa and like, I'm so sorry that I fucked up. Great. Now we can be back in relationship together again. I'm so relieved. And so anything, any action taken on top of that is actually going to come. It's going to arise out of it. 
it's going to all those actions until Kayla really takes on this relationship to conflict are going to be a function of that relationship. No matter how courageous, no matter how bold, uh, she might have lost her internet. I'll just turn my phone around so I can see if she's there. And so where I'm really curious, like I love all the actions she's taking. I'm totally happy to, it doesn't matter if I'm happy or not, totally can empower her taking those on. But really the, um, the challenge is going to be present for Kayla is not so much taking actions as it is creating a new relationship to conflict. What does conflict mean? And conflict, we could create relationships with conflict, like conflict means intimacy. Doesn't mean anyone fucked up. No one's fucked up. It's just intimacy. Or we could have it like conflict is an opportunity for connection. And what if we brought conflict into the relationship from that place? We might say the exact same thing, but energetically in our being and what comes across in our communication is going to be drastically different. I don't have a message from Kayla, so I'm imagining that her Mexican internet, she's in Mexico, has dropped off, which is unfortunate. So I'm going to have to, I'll, I'll wind us down here by myself. And we'll talk about just what happened and what I would probably do with someone like this. Oh, she's just come back. There we go. Hello. Welcome back. <laughs> Sorry, Adam. It was a, like the power just went out for oh, a couple so of minutes. Random. I don't know why, but very random. Sorry. Welcome All to Mexico. Good. I, I was just telling everyone uh, what I saw in terms of your relationship to conflict mm. and how, you know, if you could come up with a million actions, when I feel conflict, I'm going to courageously run off the diving board and bring it to that person. But if you're doing so from inside the box of one of us fucked up, that's going to create a predictable response based on what you just shared. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you see there might be to do? Not necessarily when conflict shows up, but in terms of your relationship to conflict and what you make it mean. Um, hmm. Yeah. I what mean, showed I up for you just then? I have to step outside of this realization. I had to step, I have to step outside of um, how I'm holding conflict. Like I can't, if I think it's someone fucked up, either me or you, then it's going to go the same way. Like, yeah, I totally see that. Um, but what you said, I mean, the question that you asked, like, like you reflected how it seems that there's only a negative outcome and it's like, well, why can't it be positive? Like that never occurred to me. Like, why can't something really beautiful come out of this or why can't it create more closeness? Um, so yeah, I kind of have to let go of it, meaning that someone's right or wrong. Uh, and create something different. What that different is, I'm not exactly sure right this second, but I think the piece, like the breadcrumb to follow is what if it could be a positive experience? How do you relate to conflict with Ryan? Well, I definitely still don't like it. It's not, it's not fun. Well, you're human. But, um, um, how do I relate to conflict with Ryan? I think in the moment, like until I can kind of, when I notice that, oh, we just, we just did this thing again. Like we're both in our survival mechanisms and I kind of just like, it's like, I, I step out of it. It's like when I catch it, I step out of it and I'm like, oh, okay. Like this is, everything's going to be okay. This isn't the end of the world. It's not something that's going to end our relationship. Um, and I think I can ha I have more compassion around it, uh, around conflict, that it's just two humans living together, working together, spending every day of their lives are going to, you were going to bump into each other. That's just how it goes. Um, and I see it as something to address, not step over, not shove under the rug. Um, but there is an element of like the and I step out of it faster than he does. And so that's where I'm seeing, like, I need to be able to step out of it in the same way that I step out of it with him, that I step, that happens with friend in friendships. And when I say step out of it, it's like, I'm not charged anymore about it. 
Well, I hear a lot of your attention is on like what there might be to do. Mm. So let I, I'm going to just offer you a different place to look and then we'll wind down. Yeah. For everyone watching, I'm being directive here. This is not, if, if we were in a longer conversation with Kayla, I'd be supporting her to come to her own practices and stuff rather than giving them to her. One thing you may take on, since it sounds like your relationship to conflict with Ryan is more empowered, is actually get clear not on what you do in the relationship, but what is the, how do I relate to conflict with Ryan that enables all of that? And write that out for yourself. Yeah, so. The I being, would... the being is witness and observer. Okay, well, what, cool. And what I would suggest you do is write on a top of a piece of paper, my relationship conflict means, or with mm -hmm. Ryan conflict means, and then okay. write out that so you can get clear for yourself. What do I make it mean there? Because it sounds like it means something different there. Because mm. that might give you access to a different way to relate to conflict when it shows up with other people, yeah. which will then give access to different actions, as opposed to I suck or you suck or let's pretend neither of us sucks until we finally come to the point where we have to share who sucks. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing I would really suggest, Kayla, is completion. <laughs> A lot of completion. Oh. Yeah. Okay. It, the right. cool thing is this won't, like, you don't have to take it on. For everyone that's mm -hmm. like, what the hell is he talking about? Completion is work initially I was trained in this through accomplishment coaching and it's a big part of the work Ben and I do, which is ultimately getting to a point of forgiveness, not I forgive you for fucking up forgiveness being a place where you get to like, there was nothing wrong done in the first place. Ideally that's what we're aiming towards. Not therefore continue to do it as much as you like, but like this went exactly the way it ought to have gone. So we're letting go of holding out like they should have been different. They should have done something different. This is exactly how it had to go. And so for you, Kayla, that's just going to keep coming up until you're ready to like really take it on. And I imagine that's going to really start to create something because from there, you can kind of get to a place other than someone fucked up, whether it's you or someone else. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you might be doing completion on yourself and other times completion on them. But where that's going to leave you is like, okay, from here, no one's fucked up. What's the conversation for me to have from there, which will be a fundamentally different place than one of us fucked up. What's the conversation to have time to be courageous. I'm going to tell them they fucked up. <laughs> the, the relationships will end sooner, but it won't be that much more empowered. I don't think. Yeah. I mean, I don't think I'd ever do, like do that, but just bring it to them that, Hey, I'm feeling this way, but yeah, you're right. Yeah. I see it. I see it. It's all within the same way that I'm relating to conflict. Yeah. If I don't so need that. Then it's not going to be different. Exactly. Yeah. So we need to wind down there and we'll do just a quick like debrief. Um, and if anyone in the audience has any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. We'd love those. Um, is there anything you need before we wind down, Kayla, to have this feel complete? No, I think I'm good. Okay, cool. So then what did you notice? Like, what did you expect? Anything show up for you in this conversation? Anything you want to share? Just kind of on the other side of it, outside of the container. Yeah, I think just I didn't realize that how I was relating to conflict was very, was the way that it is, period. Um, and also wow. that it was kind of different than what I've been able to create with Ryan. And I do think it is a reflection of what I have learned growing up and how it's been in my family. And so it's interesting to see that it is possible to create something different because I've done it in one area and now it's like, oh, like I wanna, I wanna create something different in, in another area. And I think that if I held conflict differently in friendships, um, it wouldn't have to mean the end or it wouldn't have to mean, like maybe, maybe the relationship will shift, um, but what if it could bring us even closer? What if it could actually like create more fulfillment in the relationship uh, than have to mean that it's ending or it's going. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of, I feel like I've been on this never ending journey of finding a best friend. And this is why, because I really am because that's what conflict means. So. <laughs> yeah. There, I mean, the, the bestest thing, like the bestest friend you'll be able to create. Well, in my experience is often like, one where there's no conflict, but fuck, I can't even be conflict-free with this guy. 
So my friends have no chance. This is just not going to happen. And then the alternative, the only way we can create that is we get some floppy person that doesn't have any of their own opinions, but mm. that's boring. And we get tired of that very quickly. Mm. The thing I'm present to is like the power of our context, our relationship to something and how it's so determinative. You know, if I have a story that like, I imagine in your family, when conflict does come forward, it's often through that lens, someone fucked up and it's time to pull, like call them to the mat, get it all clear. And then we all feel better except that person. And then that or, person holds. Yeah. yeah just I, shove it. Don't even like, exactly. Don't actually <laughs> bring it up. Just, we'll just keep smiling and keep, pretend yeah. everything's just great. Keep smiling. Everything's fine. And life will go back to normal, but then there's nothing's been addressed. Nothing's been completed on nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, I think I'd shared this with you, like uh, someone who was supporting me in my development as a leader and a coach was saying like, Adam, you, I notice you, your incompletions, the stuff you're holding on to, you tend to pave over it and make it really nice and smooth rather than get out the jackhammer and really like clear them out of the way so that you can not have anything in the space. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Nope, I don't think that's the case. <laughs> Meanwhile, underneath, I was like, fuck you. You don't know me. And uh, I remember <laughs> I was, um, and he was like, look, you can't, we're going to go back in there and lead coach training and develop leaders. You, you got to deal with this. But you're all, there's anger there that you're not even able to see, Adam. You're not owning it. So you need to take on some work. And I remember sitting in the hotel lobby, writing out an exercise to get complete, to forgive something tearing the page with my pen because I was so fucking and fuck you for this stupid fucking fuck this exercise that's basically what's happening other tenants in the hotel lobby went, oh what's going on over there and I remember arriving at a point where I didn't want to let go of what I was holding on to because I didn't want to give them the satisfaction that I'd created a breakthrough for myself and then they could <laughs> it. it's like wow look how pernicious this is you know it's so sticky so all that to say, I really get, you know, how this stuff can feel sticky and we don't want to give it up and we don't want to let it out into the space. And yeah. yeah. Hmm. Um, any last thoughts before we go to me acknowledging you and finish up? No. Cool. Um, where can people find your work? Where do people follow you? Yeah. So um, they can, friend me on Facebook. I'm active there. The other place that I'm really active is Instagram. And it's just my name, Kayla MacArthur. I love sharing my travel adventures paired with little words of wisdom and insights and nuggets that I'm learning on my journey. So uh, if they want to follow me there, they can. Nice. Instagram, it's all no underscores or anything, just Kayla MacArthur, all one word. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. And, and do follow Kayla. She's Her exploits are awesome. And I love how you always like you post these gorgeous photos of you and your, your gorgeous husband. I, I usually put a sticky over him. Oh, that guy's got way too many abs. I don't want to look at that. And then like usually a really uh, profound post underneath that often is something that you're noticing for yourself as you do your work. So it was really cool. Definitely recommend following Kayla. May I acknowledge you, Kayla? Yes. Is there anything in particular you'd like to be acknowledged for today? Mm. Uh, yeah, actually, I think um, kind of like getting out of my own way, essentially, with actually seeing something that I can be supported with. Like, I've just noticed that it's been really hard to come up with what I want support with. And so the fact that I was able to like peel back the where I'm where I usually stop uh, would be nice. It's so perfect. You'd ask for that. And I will acknowledge you for it because you've just described the dynamic of like, putting rugs over it or paving over it or stuffing it down. <laughs> so it's really great. You know, that's, it's so beautiful that you're finding something and pulling it forward because what I heard in some of what you shared is your, the capacity you developed out of necessity, they got you here to hide that stuff from yourself. So mm -hmm. it, it's really remarkable and requires great courage and vulnerability on your part to like not just stop at, you know, Hey, there's one layer we've pulled it off. There's nothing there. Kind of have to keep pulling the rugs back or peeling the onion. Like, Oh shit, there's something here. Yeah. I also really acknowledge you for your grace and your grace first, just in, this would be the perfect strategy. The being of grace would kind of concoct 
if we put enough layers of asphalt over top of it, it's going to look smooth and beautiful. And then we can go back to like everything being nice, hmm. Game of Thronesy kind of nice. <laughs> and um, and then I acknowledge you for pra the practice of manifesting and accessing and expressing a deeper layer of grace, which is the grace to be with all of it and to let yourself feel upset or like you fucked up. And then the, the incredible divine grace to take on practices that support you in letting go of the safety of I fucked up or they fucked up. Cause there is kind of a safety there. And um, I really acknowledge you for your courage and being willing to create something different. And finally, I acknowledge you for creating a different relationship with Ryan. Way to go. That's really remarkable. And I get that that's not the training you got. And you didn't get different training out of malice. It was just, that's what your parents saw to do. That's how we be. So beautiful work there and really great work today. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. Really appreciate You're welcome. that. Um, all right. Uh, anything you want to plug before we, I'm going to plug a few things. Anything you want to share that people should know you're up to or creating? Um, I mean, yeah, I'll just throw this out there because this is an awesome platform to share. But uh, Ryan and I do actually have a book that will be coming out. Um, we have decided to go all in on his book project. He's writing about his year around the world journey and the mm. decisions that led up to it, the journey itself and uh, the coming home part. And um, ah, we just his skill set, my skill set make like the perfect book. So if you love travel, if that's something that you're interested in, be sure to follow us because that will be coming out within the next six months to a year. So yeah, nice. that would be, that would be really fun. Do you guys have a title for it yet? Uh, yes. I'm not going to share it because I don't know if he wants it out in the open yet, cool. uh, but yes, he does. Have TBD. A title for it. Yes. To be determined TBD. is the title. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. What do I plug? Um, we're accepting deposits for next year's forge. That's way off. That's 11 months from now, but it's, we already have people that have paid and are reserving their seats. So um, that program is life-changing transformational magic. Kayla has gone through it twice. It's really, um, it's one of the favorite things that Bay and I get to do. And Bay and I were both sharing after the week we've had that like the leadership conversation is one where, where we're in, when we're in the storm, we're like, fuck, get me out of here. And then once we're on the other side of it, it's all we want to do. It's just so amazing. <laughs> we're like, ah, oh, who else can I be in this conversation with? So if you want to feel that, have that experience of leadership, develop yourself that way, whatever, and you feel called into this work with us, send me a message. Let me know. I'd love to have a conversation with you. Uh, I think that's it. So I hope everyone has an amazing weekend. I hope that your skies look a little less gray than mine, unless you need rain where you are, and in which case I hope it's dumping rain on you. And uh, big thanks to everyone that joined us. We'll catch you soon. Bye for now. And Kayla, you stay. I'm just going to kick these people <laughs> off the live. So I go end. No, I don't do that. I go end live. <laughs>